this will be our last reference, exa uh, reference angle example. Let's get crazy and find tangent and cotangent of theta when theta is we'll do 7 pi over 2. Oops, not theta bar. When regular theta is 7 pi over 2. So I want to know three things. Tangent, theta, cotangent theta, and uh, the reference angle. So what was the first step we did when finding reference angles? I know what they remember way back to Friday. So look at the unit circle. So draw a unit circle and figure out where 7 pi over 2 is. So draw a unit circle. 7 pi over 2. If we count in pi over 2's, I got 2 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. That's my first lap around. My second lap, so this is spiraling, my second lap will be 6 pi over 2. And then if I stop the second time over here, that would be 8 pi over 2. So where do I stop on my second lap? So I'm going to go halfway uh, between 6 pi over 2 and 8 pi over 2. So that's right at the bottom. So it's 7 pi over 2. So any questions about that um, angle right there, written out as a spiral? Now I have a choice. I can measure my reference angle either way to the x-axis. It doesn't matter which of the two ways I draw it. So I'm just going to choose to draw it this way right here. And what is our reference angle? Just pi over 2. So again, I could have drawn it. I could have picked this angle and still got pi over 2. So this is one of the few angles that the reference angle could go to either of the two x-axis because they're both the same rotation away. They're both pi over 2. So there is regular pi over 2 at the top. So write down the coordinates for the top point and the bottom point, and then figure out tangent and cotangent from the xy values. So write down the xy's at the top, xy's at the bottom, and then tell me tangent and cotangent. So do that right now. I'll give you 30 seconds. So tangents y over x, which is negative 1 over 0. Cotangent x over y, which is 0 over negative 1. So let's reduce these if we can, these values. What is negative 1 over 0? What do we call that? Undefined. And what about 0 over negative 1? That's just 0. 
So it look kind of similar. Make sure that you tell me the correct one is zero and the other one is undefined. So the last example in this section, it's going to have to do with uh, figuring out what quadrant are we in, given um, information about the trig values. So I want to know what quadrant theta is in when cosine is greater than zero and sine is less than zero. So I'm going to draw a really fast unit circle below the cosine and the sine. And what I'm going to do is figure out what part of this unit circle could we be in. So cosine is positive. Is that the x coordinate or the y coordinate that's positive? Cosine is the x coordinate. So that means we could be anywhere in quadrant one or quadrant two. So that's where our x coordinate is positive. What about sine being negative? What two quadrants make sine negative? So the bottom two, so that'd be three and four. So it could be in three, could be in four. Now the question is what quadrants in common to both of, like, both of these right here? So we gotta be in four. Because 4 is both in the first, you know, has a positive cosine and a negative sine. So we're definitely going to be right here in quadrant 4. So theta is in quadrant 4. We'll do one more of these examples. So now we got sine and tangent. So good news is you don't have to use much brain power on sine being negative. We just looked at it before and said when sine was negative, we're in the bottom half. So it could be in three, could be in four. Now tangent being negative, is tangent negative in quadrant one? Nope. And if you forget tangent, uh, just try to remember, but tangent is y over x. So we're positive in quadrant one. What about quadrant two with tangent? So it'd be negative because one of the two, the x coordinate is negative in quadrant two. And what about quadrant three? Is tangent positive or negative in three? It'll be positive because it's negative divided by negative. So tangent's a little strange, it's going to be positive in quadrant 3, and tangent's going to be negative in quadrant 4. So what quadrant is in common? So we got 4 again, didn't mean to make them both 4, but that's okay. Tangent is, or theta is in quadrant 4. Let's do one more example where we have a really big angle. Actually, let's skip that. We'll come back to that in a little bit. So we're going to jump into 10.3, basic identities. <coughs> 
And at 10.3, what we're going to do is look and see how these uh, functions are related to each other. And we will look how they are in the unit circle, but are mostly going to be how they're related to each other. So this is called basic identities, and then we're going to do more advanced ones in the next section. So I'm going to write down the basic uh, five relationships. And we'll start with uh, we'll start with secant theta. So secant theta is a reciprocal of cosine theta. So where does this come from? It's probably a good time to write down the original six trig functions. So this is uh, from the definition, so original definition. We had uh, cos theta was x, and we had secant theta. was 1 over x, so the reciprocal of the cosine function. And then we had sine theta was y, and cosecant theta was 1 over y. So that what that tells us is sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. And now we have tangent and cotangent, tan theta is y over x and cotangent theta x over y so that tells us tangent and cotangent are reciprocals so these original definitions are from one or two sections ago and these are our new basic identities on the left. There's another way to write cotangent. Cotangent is, just looking over here, x over y. So I can write cotangent as cosine over sine. So tangent is also cosine over sine. Or sorry, cotangent is cosine over sine. And last up, tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. So tangent is sine over cosine. So these are our five basic identities. You do have to remember memorize all of these. Hopefully you memorize the original definitions already. And you just have these new ones to memorize here. They just go come out straight from the original definitions though. So if you can keep the original definitions in your head, you should be able to uh, figure out the uh, basic identities on the left. So we're going to start with one example. Given sine theta equals square root 5 over 5. Oh, it's rationalized. Hooray. And tangent theta equals 1 half. Find cosine theta. So we know about sine. We know about tangent. Do we have an equation that relates sine, tangent, and cosine together? Those three functions. So it's that last equation we wrote down that I put a box around. So that relates tangent, sine, and cosine, and we know two of those three values. So we'll use that and find the third value. So we're going to use this identity 
tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. You could solve for cosine theta if you want, or you can plug in values first. It doesn't matter the order you go in. I'm going to solve for cos theta first. So we have cos theta tan theta equals sine theta and divide by tangent theta. And I, I know the two values, one of them is sine, is square root of five over five. Tangent is one half. And now I have a multi-story fraction. So I've got to keep track of the original numerator and denominator. So reciprocate the denominator. Doesn't really get much better. Two square root five over five. Any questions on relating these three trig functions together? Any of the algebra that we did? So now we're going to jump back to the unit circle. So whenever we're on the unit circle, Does anybody remember the equation for a circle? Standard form, or the equation for the unit circle? It's got some x's and some y's and an equal sign. So general form of a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So that's the general form of a circle. What is our center in the unit circle we've been using? Zero, zero. So we have zero, zero as our center. So in this HK, this is the XY coordinates for the center. What is our radius? One. So our radius is one. That's why we use the word unit. Unit circle also implies it's centered at the origin. I didn't really say that before, but the unit circle we're using is always centered at the origin. All right, so I'm just going to fill in all these values. So we got x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 1 squared. x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. So that's the equation of our circle. Of course, I don't need to write 1 squared. That's just 1. All right, so on the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, that's going to be very helpful. What trig function, if you know theta, what trig function corresponds to x? What trig function corresponds to x? Cosine. So x is cos theta, y is sine theta. You don't have to write the of theta part, but you do need to write theta. All right, so all I'm going to do is where I see x, I'm going to put in cosine theta. And wherever I see y, I'm going to put in sine theta. So we have this identity right here. And now I'm going to use some really bad notation that uh, people have been using for at least 100 years. And this is, in my opinion, a better notation to use. What I'm going to write next is the notation that everybody uses. So they put the exponent in a weird location. 
So this is the way you're going to see it written almost everywhere. It basically saves you writing a parentheses. So I'm actually going to write, use this last one as the uh, identity to memorize. So I'll write a note about our notation. So if you want to think about cosine theta, uh, the whole thing squared, that the way we write that is cosine squared theta. So here's what, um, this is what you should not do. So what I'm gonna write down here is, this is these are all wrong things to write. So if you just write cos theta square with no parentheses and your square is outside, what I'm going to think that you mean is cosine of squaring your angle. So that's what I'm going to think if you just write cos theta squared with your squared on the outside. Now naturally, uh, if you square your function normally, it would mean apply your function twice. Do cosine of cosine of theta. But unfortunately, that's not what it actually means. Uh, So there's a little warning about notation. All right, so that's just, this is our first Pythagorean identity. We're going to look at uh, we're going to get our next Pythagorean identity, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn cos squared or sine squared into one. So what do I multiply this equation by to turn cos squared into a 1? So if I want to turn that into a 1, I'm basically going to multiply by the reciprocal of cos squared. When we multiply here, we have to be extra careful. Oh, what am I? That should be an equal sign. Jeez. All right. And I'm going to multiply this by 1 over cos squared theta. When I multiply by 1 over cos squared theta, I'm going to distribute not just to the left side, but all the terms on the left side. There's two terms on the left side, so I have to multiply both of them uh, by 1 over cos squared theta. So we got cos squared over cos squared plus sine squared over si over cos squared so distribute it to all three pieces what is this first fraction simplified to so that's just one you don't need to know what cos squared is you can just tell me that's one because it's the same thing all right the next one we're going to be careful this is sine squared over cos squared i'm going to use the better notation which is sine of theta squared divided by cosine of theta squared. And I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. So this is cosine of theta squared. And now I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. And rewrite them like this. And that comes from what I call the distributing your power property. A over B to the C power is A, C, A to the C over B to the C. So if you're dividing, you can just distribute your power. And same thing if you were multiplying, 
AB to the C power. This is A to the C, B to the C. What you should never do, if you add inside A plus B to the C power, this is never going to be A to the C plus B to the C unless C is 1. That's the only time this is ever going to work. Or if A and B are both 0. So don't do the last one here. That is not an identity. That's what they call the freshman stream. Now looking back at what we got, what is sine over cosine? So we'll look back to the top. Sine over cosine, also known as tangent. Right there. So I got tangent is one of the two I'm going to replace. The other one is 1 over cosine, which I see as secant at the top. So 1 over cosine secant, and then sine over cosine is tangent. So we have 1 plus sine over cosine tangent theta squared equals 1 over cosine secant theta squared. And now I'm going to use the bad notation and rewrite my exponential. And I've always memorized it as tangent squared plus 1. So I'm going to change the order. So there's our next identity. So our last identity, we're going to get it in a very similar way. So we're going to multiply our original cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. Except I'm now going to multiply to make the sine squared turn into a 1. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over sine squared. This time around, I'm not going to be so careful with the exponential notation. I'm going to go through a little bit faster. So we multiply. We have cos squared theta over sine squared theta plus sine squared theta over sine squared theta equals 1 over sine squared theta. So cosine over sine, that's one of the two. And then 1 over sine is the other. So cosine over sine is cotangent. And then 1 over sine is cosecant. So we're going to have cosecant and cotangent in this identity. So cosine over sine is cotangent theta squared, or cotangent squared theta. Sine squared over sine squared is 1. 1 over sine is cosecant. So there's our last Pythagorean identity. So I'm going to write down the Pythagorean identities in one spot. So it's a good idea to memorize all three of these. If 
uh, memorizing all three seems to be difficult. Here's a nice trick to go from the second to the third. So the second one reads tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. So all we're going to do to go from the second to the third is just think about coing everything in the second. So I see tangent squared, turn that into a cotangent squared. Secant squared, turn that into a cosecant squared. So if you co the second one, you'll get the third one. 